Preemptive seizure warning. Because. Yeah. Though if you get, if you're photosensitive to seizures, you probably should be watching videos of me playing random games anyway. Games have changed. Many now offer deep, meaningful stories, insights into our humanity, lessons about ourselves. This isn't one of those games. I am level! They told me I could become anything, so I became level. So this game has some ZX Spectrum sort of graphics, I think is the inspiration. And it is described... Oh uh, wow, the intro music is like ten times louder. So it's got some... It's a pinball platformer, kind of. So you, you don't move your character, you tilt the level. And then you can activate plungers and pretty much everything by using space. And it's got mostly Spectrum Mask. It's got the Spectrum Mask colors and tiles. But of course, the tilting effect is vastly beyond the uh, Spectrum's capabilities. And, um... There's some non-Spectrum-esque graphics going on with the uh, stage clear thingy and other stuff, but... For the most part, it, it... Well, even the basic stuff is probably better than what a Spectrum could actually do, because, I mean... Have you seen those games? But yeah, I, I like the aesthetic of it. It's sort of interesting, um... And it's a more proper 8-bit sort of feel than most people that stamp 8-bit on a game that actually mean like 16-bit or greater. Wow, this place sure is pretty. So yeah, when you get stars, you actually get experience, which levels you up. This music sounds like it's from a Codemasters game. This could totally be in a Codemasters game. So basically how this works is you level up, and you actually gain rewards, which in this case lets us pass through red blocks. And we get more lives, and I think there's skins and stuff. We are currently at the point of the game that I played to previously. So stuff beyond this is pretty new. So we can go through those red blocks now. So it... Um... Oh. These mid-air things are a bit trickier than they would be in a normal platformer because you have to sort of plan your movement speed and everything before you do the jump. You just can't quite make it up there. And the map... There's actually some exploration elements here because of how the map works. And it's pretty interesting because we've unlocked the... Uh, we've unlocked the red blocks and you'll notice... Oops. Is that Pokeball a good thing or a bad thing? Yeah, that's that's a bad thing. Okay. So basically the objective is to explore the map. Uh, oh, I see, I see. Um, and collect all these stars. And as you collect stars, you'll eventually be able to unlock more of the map, which makes it sort of a... Metroidvania, but based on how much you explore, not what items you get. Well, I guess that's kind of... How much you explore is how you get items, so... It just doesn't feel quite like a Metroidvania, but it kind of is in the ex exploration and unlocking aspect. And there's some backtracking, but I mean, there's also, um, those checkpoints let you warp around. So you can avoid a fair amount of backtracking. But we're gonna need... I love the nonsense enemies. That's so... 8-bit of it. You know, the, the weird random crap, and it's all one color. I never had a Spectrum, though, so I'm not sure um, if I can really comment on how faithful this is to the Spectrum. I'm sure some stuff is too, like, has too many colors, or is too... I'm sure the resolution is too high. Much too high. Oh. But, like, the, the... I see four colors. No! Oh, I see four colors on the, um, what do you want to call those? The, uh, thingies. The springs. Or the plunger, I guess. So the plungers have, like, I'm not sure if they can have four colors on the ZX Spectrum. I know that's how many colors you get on the SNES. Nintendo Ball. 
Do you now pass through these? I'm not sure how many block colors there are. I've only seen two blocks. Also, annoying thing is, uh, this game was apparently designed for touchscreen first, so you gotta use your mouse, um... Let's use this one. That's a pet peeve of mine in these Flash games that are all keyboard, except menus. But that's also why this game is Unity. Or at least probably part of why it's Unity. It's uh, originally designed for mobile, apparently. I'm not sure if what platform it's on, but I just noticed that in a comment. I take a peek at the top comment sometimes. Freaking Pokeballs. I guess they're eyes. They look a lot like Pokeballs, though. Is this gusts of wind? Yeah, that is something that absolutely definitely cannot be done on ZX Spectrum. That is way too many sprites going on. The arrows, I mean. Some of these areas are like one shot only, or you have to approach from a certain angle to get it, or from a certain exit. So the game isn't really super easy at some parts, it's kinda... That can be kinda frustrating in it. And also some of these jumps, you gotta time very carefully. Because you can't move yourself in air. And we're at a dead end. We're gonna clear this area, because we're basically screwed. Why not? Go ahead and die, because we gotta go back out anyway. So there's at least purple blocks, too. Oh, it says which things you got! Oh, okay. That makes it easier to clear stuff. I'm pretty sure which stuff you- which stars you've collected don't- doesn't persist, um... outside of the play state session. Like, after you exit. Or after you die, I mean. But, uh, this is kinda useful. Oh, 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 oh. Whoa. Okay, you can come here from the bottom, then. Get that thing. That's sort of where the game is neat, neat but frustrating. You have the limited control of your character, because it's basically like pinball. But sometimes you need somewhat precise movements. And so it just feels like random. I think if I tilted the right the whole way. Actually, I'm not sure if tilt affects movement midair. I guess it shouldn't. Stuff like this can be frustrating. Because it just... it feels so random. And... I guess it's not random, it's just based on the physics. But you can affect, only affect the physics so much that it... makes it effectively random. Like, it's random because it's not particularly within human capabilities to control. Oh, oh. Ah. Okay, we can- I think we can do this one, so let's do this one instead. Uh, never mind. Let's- let's try this one more time. And as you get- unlock checkpoints, um, getting around is easier, of course, so that's pretty cool. Would you please get up there? Okay, cool. Alright. Yeah, this- this is what makes it a little- oh, come on, man. Physics! Physics! Waiting for enemies can be slightly annoying sometimes. And I don't- I'm not sure if there are any enemies that are- Ow. Ow. Poor guy. Game over! Did we- no, we didn't get enough. Crap. I like the way the map is unveiled like that, it's pretty neat. Alright. Let's be Nintendo Ball now. I have no idea- this is probably a reference to something, I don't know what though. The Baby is the X Spectrum game, I... But what options we got. Music, so right now we don't need either of those. Um, hmm, not that many checkpoints! I know there are some red blocks right behind here, so let's go ahead and get those. I also like how this is revealed. Um, it sort of lets you get to the end of this section here, and then it pulls the reveal that, oh, you can unlock stuff. And then you can actually finish this area, so that's pretty cool. Okay, I know that we go up here, and there's an area to the left we did not explore. This level... 
It seems unpleasant. I never like these bumper things, because they made pinball feel so random. Now. Oh. Getting closer. Alright, you know what? Let's do this. Let's do this like Brutus. No! You get your spherical butt up there, good sir. You and your spherical butt! Oh, 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 oh! Aww. Can't give up now. We only got one to go. The most annoying one. But but still. Oh, up, 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 up. This is why I like Pachinko, because you can like drop a whole bunch of them at once and watch them all go around instead of just worrying about that one ball that's not really doing what you want it to do and it's there you go. Okay. I guess tilting the screen was the, the tip there. Or the, not the tip, the, um, trick something. I don't know. I don't know what words that I say. Oh. Mean. <laughs> wow. Okay, let's not go up. Let's just roll right along. Moving right along. Mystery box! Checkpoint! Oh! No. Oh, you can save and cash in at any point, not just... Wait, what's over here? Oh, right, and it's not just plungers that the spacebar affects. Oh. No! Squish. Well, let's see what we unlocked. We'll probably give this one more life. There is more of the map and stuff to find, but this is the basis of the gameplay. The music's pretty good. Um, I'm not sure if the ZX Spectrum was capable of anything particularly like this, though. More like NES. Lots of people forget that um, people like say, oh, 8-bit games were good and graphics weren't everything and it's not about the computing power, but the NES was actually a pretty impressive piece of hardware back in the day. Ow. Damn. I'm not sure if it was the strongest 8-bit console, there's probably some incredibly powerful piece of garbage that didn't have any software support. But, uh, it certainly was not, you know, a complete garbage console, graphics-wise, that just happened to have the spirit of the fight or something. What I do like about this is if you don't like levels, you can just be like, ah, screw it, I can level up elsewhere, and just, like, play around. And that the check marks on the map let you, you know, tr keep track of uh, where you've been. So you can sort of play around at your own pace, it's very non-linear, and, and non-linear in a way that's not like, oh, go do this quest, or do this other quest that's basically the same thing, but with it, you know, kill four goblins instead of four orcs, because, you know, that's non-linear. Hmm. I think this plunger is basically suicide. That or it doesn't go all the way over. Go, 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 go! Yeah, we're just gonna explore. Oh, hey, another checkpoint! You don't have complete control, just keep rolling. Such is life. Very true. Very true. Oh, how convenient! How <laughs> I like that, it's, ve it's very fitting for the level there. Go with the blow. That's like a bad porno name. Hmm. I want- oh! Kill me. Actually, you don't need to kill yourself. You can just save and quit in the menu. You go to the menu by clicking the pause button. Another artifact of it- oh no, we did not level up. Another artifact of mobile development. You, um, there's a pause button in the corner, you have to click it. There does not appear to be any control, like keyboard control to do that. 
So yeah, the game could benefit from complete keyboard controls. Yeah, you click this. And you still have to click these buttons. Yeah, it's a cute little game, and I like how exploring is unveiled. And the gameplay is pretty unique. It's just, um, you know, a, a um, like a remix of two different game styles in one, but it's not really one I've seen before, and it it makes it pretty interesting. And the levels usually aren't too hard, you just gotta figure out the trick, and because of the placement of the objects, it's usually fairly apparent what you need to do. Yeah, we don't care about this level. Platforms is this on? Oh, it is also an Android. Okay. Yeah, I'm playing the congregate version, of course, because I'm talking about keyboard controls. So yeah, that was I am level V1.0. I think I'm not sure if V1.0 is just the version or if that's part of the name because the title screen only said I am level. But yeah, this is level. Nice to meet you, level. I am Sir Tap Tap.